si on vous demande de trouver le point commun entre un lapin politicien ultra-violent, un assassin motard et un archer solitaire, vous dites « Non, cherchez pas, c'était pas une vraie question ». Ces trois jeux, puisque l'on parle ici de Not a Hero, Ronin et Titan Souls, ont en commun le fait d'être édités par Devolver Digital, et donc d'avoir plu, entre autres, à Graham Struthers. So, uh, my name is Graham, I work at Devolver Digital, and uh, this is our first trip to Paris, bringing some games to meet the press. Parce que chez Devolver Digital, c'est comme ça qu'on fonctionne, au coup de cœur en quelque sorte. Preuve en sont donc les trois jeux précédemment cités et la manière dont ils se sont retrouvés dans le catalogue d'Evolver. So we have, uh, behind me we have Not a Hero, which is a game from Roll7. Um, some of you might know them from a game they made called Ollie Ollie, a skateboarding game. So we met John and Simon and Tom about uh, two years ago, when they showed us a very early prototype of uh, Not a Hero. And um, we liked them uh, a lot. And uh, yeah, we decided we would try and make a game with them. So that's it. They're based in London. And then a little bit further back is Titan Souls. Um, we saw that game in a Ludnum Dare, and uh, we really liked it. So we got in touch with Mark, and uh, that's how we started working with them. And right at the very back, you have a game called Ronin, and um, the developer Ronin is actually working with a studio called Flying Wild Hog. And we were already working with them on Shadow Warrior, but as an individual, he approached us with his prototype of Ronin. And again, same situation, we liked it. So the common theme is, it's games we actually like to play ourselves. So that's it, really. Créé en 2009, l'éditeur Devolver Digital s'est principalement fait connaître par la sortie de Hotline Miami en 2012, puis a explosé un peu plus tard avec des jeux comme Holy Holy, Love Trousers, Broforce ou The Talos Principal. Des titres très variés, pour autant de développeurs différents auxquels l'éditeur entend apporter un soutien financier et logistique. I mean, you know the indie scene, I'm sure, quite well, and quite often small teams, sometimes with more than one job, you know, a, a normal job, and then making games in their spare time. So it's quite brave for them to decide to just try to make a game. So often, some money is needed. But then also, I guess, we have really good relationships ourselves with people like Sony, Steam, Microsoft, we understand. But then also production, so translation, localization, QA, making sure the game, when it's released, is actually ready to release. And then, of course, PR, uh, marketing. And of course, if you're a developer, for example, you're, you're here in Paris, And how do you make a connection with media in America? Or how do you present your game? So we have Devolvers in America and also in Europe, so we have both. Sans grande surprise, ces aides sont apportées dans l'espoir de régler des problèmes auxquels différents membres de Devolver ont eu l'occasion d'être confrontés par le passé. Four of us used to work in game development. We experienced that problem of trying to find funding. And of course, at that point, we were trying to address games on PlayStation 3 and 360. And of course, it's much more expensive. And not only did you have to find the money to make your game, but then of course, to produce the game, to manufacture the game, and then sell it to retailers, it was impossible. So thanks to Steam with digital, it made it much more accessible. Et aujourd'hui, Devolver fait donc en sorte que des petits développeurs puissent sortir leur jeu, tout en leur laissant l'intégralité des droits de propriété intellectuelle. When we sign any game, first of all, the rights to the game, the ownership of the game, the intellectual property is the developers. We have nothing in this. And we don't have any rights to a sequel. If they decided to make one, they don't have to choose to work with us. It's really up to them. So, again, To us, it makes perfect sense. The developers making the game they want to make, not something that we are trying to inflict. Si cette valorisation des développeurs et de leurs droits s'inscrit dans une nouvelle tendance générale provoquée par le gain d'ampleur du jeu vidéo indépendant, elle était loin d'être automatique il n'y a encore pas si longtemps. Assez pour qu'on puisse se dire aujourd'hui, en voyant un devolver digital travailler en bonne entente avec de petits studios de la sorte, que ça paraît presque trop beau pour être vrai. Un constat que semble d'ailleurs partager Graham Struthers. For us, you said it's too good to be true. It can seem like it's too good to be true. Well, that's how it feels to us. We're working with really interesting people. 
uh, we have a lot of fun with our work. And right now, and it's been the case for quite some time, there's a really strong audience for independent games, even if the, the games themselves are quite different, each one for, to the other. And also we found with the media, there's such a level of interest with independent games, which maybe wasn't there five years ago. So I think everyone's enjoying it, right? Um, so let's hope it lasts. Espérons que ça dure, effectivement. Et en attendant, on vous reparle très bientôt de Ronin et Not a Hero.